uh, an example of a 12 bar blues um, in 12-8. Uh, I usually uh, count in 6-8 just because it's uh, just kind of a habit of mine and just remember to kind of double all the measures. But in, to keep with traditional kind of blues form in the 12 bar blues, you want to count in 12-8. Uh, for um, an example, in uh, Johnny Copeland's uh, Rain, we have uh, the chord progression is going to be E major, or I, I like to throw in the seventh, um, whether it's a seventh chord or not. He probably does use an E major seven, um, uh, just because it's a, a traditional bluesy chord uh, kind of technique always add in that dominant seventh. Um, uh, and then it goes to the A, and again, this is all for 12 beats in 12-8. Um, and then after that, it goes to the E. And then it switches it around. It goes E, and then the A. And again, each one is for 12 beats. So it's important to count this 12-8, uh, especially when you go back to that E, because you got two E chords that are back to back. It's kind of like the end of the first phrase for an E chord, and then you begin the next um, with another 12 beats. So when you're playing um, the, you know, the same chord for a number of beats, it's easy to kind of lose track of it and not really know where the beginning or end of it is. Um, this is why we always want to practice counting out loud. Um, well, counting in our heads or out loud. Um, counting out loud is more of a kind of a conditioning technique that we'll use um, uh, once we uh, kind of master songs and stuff and get the, the counting going. Um, but anyway, uh, you do want to practice uh, counting out loud, but um, if, it's, if it's more of a distraction than a help, then you want to kind of uh, just wait until you, you become familiar enough and comfortable enough with the song to be able to implement the counting out loud. But at first, um, uh, moving on from that E, A, and E, and then E and A, you go to the B chord. And again, you can play the B major or the B7. If you extend that pinky up there, you can kind of get some extra color to it there. That D sharp and uh, G sharp in there. Or I guess I should say an E flat, B, C, D. No, it's a D sharp and A flat. But anyway, um, so after that, you got the A and then the E. And then it does this at the end. Here is Rain by Johnny Copeland. It's in, with a 12 8 count. You can follow below as we play through the chords. Start on 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Little intro. You can kind of come up with, just use that E minor. You can use the E minor um, uh, scale for it and just fill in the gaps with 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Doesn't matter if you go. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4. Or you can go 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And you notice how I'm going 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's, a, it's an accent. You can do whatever in between. Um, it's an accent on the 1, 2, 3, and then the 4. Kind of a staccato to kind of get the, the blues feel. So you want 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So it's really throughout the whole thing, if you want to get that, that really sharp blues kind of groove, do a, a, an extended note where you're just basically playing the, letting it ring out for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then again on the 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And if you notice, I'm playing kind of like part of the chord and then following up with some more. And, uh, you know, it's always good to, you know, use your fingers. But even if you're using a pick, and it's good to, actually good to kind of get used to both. You'll have a, a much more um, 
uh, uh, intimate uh, feel for the strings and everything. Um, but anyway, so with the pick, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So you can do it either way. Now, um, when you go to actually play it, um, again, I'll go through it this time, <laughs> but uh, follow along below and notice how the first two measures are only one measure of E and A. And then you have measures that are, you know, two, uh, basically two measures of each chord until you get to that third line where it starts to uh, break up the measures back to one, or the chords back to one measure. Um, and the last two measures are actually split up between two chords per measure. So, um, and not to mention, uh, or not to forget to mention, that you put accents on the four, five, six, and seven when you do that ending thing the, the, uh, on the turnaround. You got one, or four, five, six, seven. And then you use the rest of the measure to usually follow up with a it's a, a common uh, little blues turnaround or, or kind of cadence at the end there. Um, but anyway, let's go through it. So remember, again, back to the three uh, steps. Hands in position and your, um, and uh, count, out count out a measure before you start and keep counting as you start. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12. Remember to start on the 7. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And two measures of E. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Again, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. it's a measure of the same thing you want to play it a little different a little intense one two three four five six seven eight nine use your dynamics to go up and down three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve b seven three five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve one two split it up five six Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve again. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one, two, three, four. And all I'm doing is using notes. That E minor. And it's that same pentatonic scale that we may have first learned in A or, or a different key. The E minor or A minor pentatonic. Same thing as this in E minor, including the open strings. And a lot of a lot of songs are in in A and E. So it's good to kind of, uh, the first scale I learned was actually that E minor pentatonic, just because of the, it's almost like the guitar's root note, so, so to speak, is in E, so it's just uh, kind of natural that I, I learn things in E. And, but, but again, it doesn't matter what key you learn the stuff in, uh, you want to know the theory to know how to transpose it. And on the guitar, it's pretty easy where you can just shift it up and down, but when you're starting uh, to, include the open strings, the pattern changes. And this is one of the reasons why, even on the guitar, even though it's more conducive to just pattern recognition and shifting it up and down, depending on what string you're starting to scale from, you might visualize the pattern in different ways. And this leads to more creativity within your solos and, and more advanced playing, and most importantly, just getting to know the notes around where you are. Uh, again, we want the spatial orientation um, of, of uh, 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 almost looking at music as a three-dimensional thing or pathways. <laughs>